MTG Monster. You play Swickamandy games every Monday and Thursday. <laughs> goblin approved. Hey, let me get another sip of that generic goblin noise, would you? Hey gang, and welcome back. Just so you know, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, one word, at flitsidegaming.com to get 10% off orders $10 or more. You can also use the promo code at Original Magic Art on everything except for paintings. And finally, you can use the code at mtg.multizone.ca to get 10% off of your orders of singles. Using the code will help you save some money and help out the channel at the same time. Just thought you might want to know, Flipside Gaming is doing another giveaway, this time for a box of Modern Horizons. From May 13th until June 16th, if you place an order of $10 or more, you'll be entered to win. You can now also enter for free by mailing Flipside Gaming a self-addressed envelope or postcard with your information on it. I've also included a link below with more information. It's one entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game is another multi-zone matchup, and we have two new faces. First up is Dominique playing his Surak deck, and he keeps a Forest, a Birds of Paradise, Tamir Ascendancy, Phyrexian Metamorph, Lightning Greaves, Secure Tribe Elder, and Wheel of Fortune. Miguel, who is also new to the channel, is playing his God Eternal Kefnet, keeping an Unwind, Cryptic Command, Four Islands, and a card I can't quite see. I am playing Erebos, keeping a Swamp, Thespian Stage, Soul Ring, Sangromancer, Rise of the Dark Realms, Nevernyal's Disc, and a Sanguine Bond. And last but not least, Matthew is back having borrowed a deck, and he's playing Merith, keeping a Wooded Bastion, Green Sun Zenith, Parallel Lives, Misty Rainforest, Silvala, Heart of the Wilds, Gamble, and a Chaos Warp. I win the die roll, and I start us off. I play a Swamp, and I pass to Dom. Dom plays a Forest, and he casts Birds of Paradise. Matthew plays a Misty Rainforest, cracking it and taking one to go and find a Taiga, and passing. Miguel plays an Island, and passes. I play an Urborg for my turn, and I cast Soul Ring, passing. Dominic casts Secure Tribe Elder in his main phase, and he plays a Tap Steam Vents. Matthew plays his Wooded Bastion, and casts a Green Sun Zenith where X is 1. He goes to find an Avacyn's Pilgrim, and passes. Miguel plays an Island, and passes. I play another Swamp, and put Erebos onto the stack. Miguel insists I pay 3 more for the God with Mana Leak, which I sadly can't pay. Meanwhile, Dominique has sacrificed his Elder to go and find a basic island. Dom plays an island and casts Phyrexian Metamorph, taking 2 life for the cost and has it come in as a copy of Soul Ring. We then see a Wheel of Fortune resolving, and we all ditch our hands and draw a fresh 7. And I'm so glad that Miguel countered my commander and not this wheel. And with nothing else, Dom passes. Matthew plays a Grove of the Burn Willows and taps it for a red, giving me one life, to help pay for his commander. Merith then resolves, and Matthew casts a main phase crop rotation, sacrificing the Grove to go and find Gaia's Cradle. He announces he'll tap it and cast Lightning Greaves, and passes, but he goes to find the lands first. Miguel plays an island, and we see a Curious Homunculus before he passes. I cast Read the Bones in my main phase, scrying 2, losing 2, and drawing 2. I play another Swamp, and cast Blood Chief Ascension. I then pass, and at the end of turn, Dom uses Worldly Tutor to go and find a Regal Behemoth, putting it on top. Dom plays an Island, and taps 6 mana worth to pay for the Regal Behemoth, which I counter with a Withering Boon, losing 3 life to counter the creature spell. With nothing else, Dom passes. Matthew plays a forest and drops an Eternal Witness. He returns Parallel Lives to his hand, and tapping the Cradle, drops the enchantment to the field. Moving to combat, Merith hits Miguel for 3, and he then passes. Miguel transforms his Comunculus to a Voracious Reader on his upkeep, having met the 3 or more instants or sorceries required to transform the creature. He plays an island for his turn, and brings out Kefnet. Moving to combat, Miguel then sends the reader at Matthew for 3 as well. And at the end of turn, I put a counter on my ascension, having missed the first one from the turn before. I pay 6 in my main phase for Noxious Gearhulk, blowing up Kefnet and gaining some life. 
I then drop Phyrexian Reclamation and pass to Dominic. Dominic plays Cultivate in his main phase, finding a mountain for the field and a forest for his hand. He plays the forest as his land for turn, and he casts the new Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. Dom then down ticks her to look at the top three, and exiles a card face down. He then pays three to cast Beast Within, and blows up the foily Gaia's Cradle. This gives Matthew not one, but two 3-3 beasts. Talk about trade value. He doesn't have the token sadly, so I give him some foily beast tokens to go with the foily deck he has. Matthew casts a Sol Ring in his main phase, and then moves the tripod like a monster. He makes some tokens with Merith, and then casts an Eldamri's Call to go and find a creature, but first moves to combat. He swings the beast at Miguel for six, and the witness to take out Vivian. At the end of turn, I add another counter on my ascension. Miguel plays an island and casts Star Compass, which comes in tapped and triggers the reader's prowess ability. He decides not to attack, keeping a blocker back, and he passes. My turn is also pretty quick, as I drop a Swamp and pay 5 for Polluted Bonds. Moving to combat, the Gear Hulk hits Dom for 5. I then pass, adding the third counter to my ascension, making it active. Dom draws for turn and taps out completely to cast a Genesis Wave for X is 8. He hits 5 lands, which makes me super happy, and they all come in and deal 2 each to him for a total of 10, and I gain 10 life. He also loses another 2 because of the Genesis Wave going to his graveyard, and I gain 2. He then deals with the other cards, having the Clever Impersonator come in as a copy of Eternal Witness, and he returns his Wheel of Fate to hand. Dominic then uses his wheel, and we all discard our hands. This triggers the ascension for all of my opponents, with Dom losing 6, Matthew losing 8, and Miguel losing 10, which has me gaining 24, and with nothing else, Dom then passes. Matthew draws and plays a command tower. The table agrees that I've kind of become the archenemy, but my massive life total is kind of hard to deal with. Matthew confidently says that he's got the medicine, and with a foily triumph of the hordes hitting the stack, I don't doubt him. He swings everything but the witness at me, which goes at Miguel, and I die to infect damage, while the reader blocks the witness and gets three minus one minus one counters put onto it. Matthew then plays a Beastmaster's Ascension and realizes his sequencing was a bit poor and he should have done it first. Whoops. And he then passes. Miguel plays an island and he casts Soul Ring. We then see the return of Kefnet and he passes turn. Dom plays a command tower from his deck, and pays 4 to drop a Sarkin's Unsealing onto the field. Moving to combat, he swings a Tally and the Shaman of the Great Hunt at Matthew. A Tally's ability triggers on attack, and Dom gets to cast a Wild Growth from Matthew, and puts it onto a forest, and he casts Miguel's Cold Steel Heart, naming green as it enters. We then move to the damage step, and Matthew takes 10. The two creatures get a plus 1 plus 1 counter from connecting thanks to the Shaman. In Dom's second main phase, he has Prime Speaker Zagana hitting the field, gaining 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters from seeing the largest creature, and she then draws Dom 8 cards. Dom then casts a Progenitor Mimic, who upon resolution, comes in as a copy of Clever Impersonator slash Eternal Witness. He returns the Genesis Wave to hand, and discards down to 7, with one of the cards notably being Anger. Matthew draws, and plays a non-foil Marsh Flats, unlike the rest of his deck. He casts Marari's Wake, and cracks the Flats, losing one to find a Savannah. He recasts his Commander, who comes in with five plus one plus one counters on it this time, and moves one of them to make two 1-1 one -one creature tokens. Matthew then swings everything at Dom, who blocks Merith with Zagana, and puts the two cloned Eternal Witnesses to stop two of the tokens, taking eight. With nothing else, Matthew passes. Miguel draws, and plays an island. He casts a Sky Diamond which comes in tapped, and wants to keep some blockers back, passing. Dom pays six in his main phase for an Inferno Titan, dealing four to Matthew with Sarkin's Unsealing Trigger. The Titan then enters, and does another three to Matthew. Dominic then activates the Shaman's ability, drawing a card for each creature with power 4 or greater, and in total drawing 4 cards. He then pays another 6 to cast Selvala Stampede. 
Dom and Miguel vote for Wild, while Matthew votes for Free. Dom then reveals a Goreclaw for the first creature card from his library, and then a Gruel Rage Beast is the second. He has it fight Kefnet upon entering. Dominic then puts out a Terracidon from his hand, and he blows up three of his own lands. The Terracidon fights the Reader, while the three Elephant Tokens fight the remainder of the untapped creatures on Matthew's side, as well as the Avacyn's Pilgrim. As I noted earlier, everything has haste because of the discarded Anger, and Dom is able to swing his board at Miguel and Matthew, and with enough damage on the board, takes both of them out in one swing. Game Review Time so, I'm quite happy with some of the changes that I've made to Erebos. I've shifted away from mono black good stuff and focused more on life gain and life loss. I won't say that it's the most competitive of decks, but you got to see a lot of fun cards like With Rain Boon, and I have some other treats in the deck that hopefully you'll see in the future. I think unfortunately for Miguel, the game went downhill as soon as he mana leaked my commander. I wouldn't say it was a bad move, but unfortunately had he known that Wheel of Fortune was coming the next turn, I think he probably would have saved it for that. After he wheeled his hand a couple times, he really didn't have a lot of action going, and he seemed to draw a lot of lands, which is unfortunate. Matthew had a few stumbles, unfortunately, and I think that's what happens when you play someone else's deck. I do love Merith, though, and it would be really interesting to see the actual owner of the deck pilot it, so hopefully we'll get Chris on the channel soon enough. Dominic's Serac deck shows once again why creatures are very powerful. He also ran a lot of cards that I'd never really seen before in EDH, like Sarkin's Unsealing, and I really love some of his choices, like the Gruel Rage Beast, as a way to deal with creatures and allow him to connect with his own. I also enjoyed his laissez-faire attitude when he cast Genesis Wave, knowing fully well that he might hit only lands. Sometimes you just gotta take the hit and keep going, and he certainly did that. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.